Hi, everybody. Welcome to Busy Living Sober. It's episode 303, just like the area code in Colorado. Episode 303, and our topic today is fear. Um, And we are sponsored today by Soberlink. Nearly 15 million people in the U.S. have alcohol use disorder, and that's alcohol only. This can be attributed to the stigma that surrounds addiction and how people don't want to talk about it. Soberlink, just like Busy Living Sober, tries to strive strives to erase the stigma associated of alcohol addiction. Their remote uh, alcohol monitoring tool has helped over 500,000 people to be more accountable in their sobriety. Their voluntary system encourages connection and honesty, which helps to rebuild trust and maintain sobriety. I've teamed up with Soberlink to create the resource guide tips for keeping busy living sober for those in recovery. Visit www.soberlink.com slash BLF to get the resource guide. And if you or someone you know can benefit from accountability for alcohol recovery, you'll also find a form on that page to sign up for a $50 promo code. So again, that's www.soberlink.com slash BLS. Thank you again, Soberlink, for sponsoring us today. And today is Wednesday, July 6, 2022, two days after the 4th of July. And today, again, my topic today is fear. I started off my day today going to a meeting on Zoom and they talked about fear. And then I got this amazing quote sent to me by one of the things I signed up for, for quotes. I'm going to try and find it up here. I think I made it small. So please give me two seconds to read this. Here we go. There are two basic motivating forces, fear and love. When we are afraid, we pull back from life. When we're in love, we open to all that life has to offer Offer with passion, excitement, and acceptance. We need to learn ourselves first in all of our glory and all of our imperfection. If we cannot love ourselves, we cannot fully open to the, our ability to love others or our potential to create evolution and all hope for a better world rest in fearlessness and open-hearted vision of people who embrace life. And that was from John Lennon. So it's so funny. I, um, I got up this morning and f- before doing anything, my thought was, what am I going to talk about today? Sure. I am to my podcast today. And I don't know what my topic's going to be. And then all this stuff about fear started coming up and I'm like, okay, then I went and I looked at what I had talked about most recently on my podcast and I hadn't talked about fear in a really long time. At least that wasn't the, to- the full topic. So here we are with fear and um, there are a lot of acronyms for fear and um, fear is such a driving force in so many people's lives. You know, um, I, I think I drank because I was so fearful Um, I think back to all the feelings I had and I didn't know about anxiety. I don't think anxiety was really a a big word back in 20, 2006, but anxiety, I think is fear and, um, being fearful of all things, fearful of what was going to happen, fearful of what wasn't going to happen. Um, fearful of what I did before, fearful of what I may do in the future, fearful of what was going to happen with my kids, fearful of what other people thought about me. Um, when I got sober, you know, that's going to be 16 years coming up here. And when I got sober, I was, you know, I was divorced. I had three little kids. I, um, I was scared of everything. I was really scared of everything. I had, um, I bought a house that I couldn't afford, um, but I was in the school district, but I felt was important for my kids to be in. And I, but I was so scared, right? So I go and I decide I'm really scared, but I was so scared of my drinking that I wanted to change that. I knew that that wasn't working anymore. Um, I was so scared to change that, but I have to tell you my I wanted to change. I wanted to change because I knew that the drinking was taking over in a way that I didn't want it to. I was, um, it was debilitating because I hated myself when I drank. So I had to be, I was really scared. I guess I was so scared that if I kept drinking, something really, really bad was going to happen. And then what would happen to my kids and what would happen to me? 
So that fear I had was so big that I decided that I was going to get sober. And I went into, you know, a 12 step program. And I was so fearful of that 12 step program and what was going to happen that it almost literally was, um, you know, um, uh, it was so debilitating that um, um, it was so debilitating what the thought was, if I kept drinking and I didn't go into these rooms, what was going to happen to me? So I went to these rooms and I can remember going to that first, um, that first meeting that I went to. And it was like, oh my God, what am I doing? Where am I going? And what is this going to be like? And I remember getting to this door at the church going, oh my gosh, this is like the heaviest door. And I'm going to go in here and I know this is going to change my life. And I know this is the stepping off point, but I was so scared. I was so scared. But again, that fear of keeping going with the alcohol was bigger. I knew I had to change that. I knew I had to change it. There was no question. I had to, I had to change that. And to what lengths was I willing to go to change that? And I decided that this, I'd known people that Alcoholics Anonymous had worked for, but again, there was a big unknown with it because that anonymous piece, you know, that's such a huge unknown that makes it even more scary. I was scared. I was really, really petrified on a lot of levels of what was going to happen to me and what were people going to think of me and what were the people in there going to be like? And was I going to be like them? Was this going to be for the rest of my life? There was so much fear and um, God. There's always fear, right? There's always fear in us as human beings. And I don't know when it began. I don't know when we as humans um, got this fear. If it was from the very beginning, when maybe when God said to, you know, Adam and Eve, you eat this, you're something bad's going to happen to you. And so you either, you don't eat it. And so they ate it anyway. And bad things happen, Adam and Eve. Was that when the fear was started? I don't know when it was started, but I know that it's in all of us. And the people that want to change, the people that have decided that it's enough. And I think, by the way, this fear thing, it doesn't matter if you're an alcoholic or you're not an alcoholic. I think this fear thing happens to anybody. That's why sometimes I think my podcast should be called Busy Living Life. But um, I think every person I know has fear. And so fear then um, manifests itself in different ways. So the fear can manifest itself in being a control freak. A f- the fear in us can manifest ourselves in being um, totally uh, crazy control freak. It's crazy control freak. We can get to this place where we want to control. So if we don't get to do our certain exercises, we're going to be not okay. If we don't um, have the house in a perfect condition, it's not going to be okay. If the books aren't properly done, it's not going to be okay. We are so important that if we don't do certain things, the world's going to spin off its access. Um, Nothing in the world's going to be okay. If we don't do certain things, the fear is going to be so debilitating that we have to get into action. And what is that action? And today, my action is a lot different than my action was back in 16 years ago. It's a lot different than it was. Um, my fear used to be, I, I'm just going to drink so I don't feel it, right? So I didn't want to feel anything. So I didn't have to feel fear. I drank that drink. The fear went away, right? This is actually I see, but... um. The fear, if I drank, was at bay, right? I didn't have to feel it. But the minute I stopped drinking and I'd wake up the next day and go, oh my God, what did I do? Who did I say? Who did I hurt? That was really a lot of fear. And then looking in the mirror, being so scared. Oh my God, who am I? Who am I? I have no idea who I am. That was really scary. Really, really scary. I think think that was like pretty much the scariest thing was not knowing who I was and knowing that I had been relying on alcohol since I was, you know, and not since I was 13, but let's say 16, 17, I've been relying on it to help me get through life. It was like my total, um, 
it was my medicine. It was like, this is the only thing I can do is drink. And I know that that will settle my nerves. I know I won't be scared anymore. I know I won't be scared anymore. And um, are we ever promised that we're okay? Is, are we ever promised that that fear that we have deep inside of us is going to go away? And I can tell you that today it is alleviated a lot. I have brought that fear that's deep, deep, deep inside of me. The biggest thing I'm scared of, I brought that out of the darkness and brought it into the light and I'm not as scared anymore. If you bring it from this dark part inside of you that you don't want to tell anybody you're scared of whatever it is that you're scared of deep down inside of you. If you bring it out to the light, it's not as dark, right? So this fear that we have that nothing's going to be okay. This fear that our, I know in America, um, at the people that are at the top of our political system and the media is all about scaring us, right? They're all about fear, 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 fear. Oh my God, there's a hurricane coming. What are you going to do? Are you ready? It's hurricane season. Have you gone out and bought a new generator? Have you gotten plywood to put on your, on your walls? And I mean, your windows, have you gotten plywood for that? You better be scared because this year they say there's going to be da, 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 number of hurricanes this year. Oh, now here's another one. Uh, we're going to be, get scared because the food prices are going up. Get scared because oil prices are going up. You can't afford anything. Everything's going to be really bad. Get scared because the things are going to happen in this country that you can't do anything about. Get scared of all this stuff. Get scared of COVID. Get scared of your kids getting COVID. Get scared so I can manipulate you. Get scared. Get scared because it's all about manipulating you. That's what they're doing. That's what all this stuff is about, is manipulating you. They're feeding on your fear. They love it. They love it. And no wonder people have been drinking and doing drugs like nobody's business. You know, now they, now they have all this, these drugs coming over the border so that anybody can take those. More people are dying of drug addiction than ever before. More people. More people are dying of drugs than ever before. And more stuff is coming over this border that we have no idea about. And we have all this fear. So of course, this fear that we have that the government's put on us, scared, 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 scared. And then we've got these drugs and all this alcohol that's available to us. So we're scared, we're scared, we're scared. Let's go take these drugs or let's go drink this alcohol and I'm gonna feel better. But it's always very short-lived. The, the, the reprieve from, from the fear from drugs and alcohol, that, that when you feel better from those things, it doesn't last very long. It lasts maybe maybe a couple hours, maybe five hours, maybe six hours, but it doesn't last that long, right? And then with the drugs, a lot of the drugs that they have out there today, if, you, if it doesn't kill you right away from doing them, you're going to want more of them, more of them, more of them, because they made you feel better for that little infinite time and it wasn't enough and you want more and you want more. Alcohol, same way. You wake up the next day and you have fear because of what you've done the day before. You're fearful of what you had done in the past or you're fearful of what's going to happen in the future. So you're like, I got to ingest this stuff. I got to take it in. I got to take in the drugs. I got to take in the alcohol. I got to take in the alcohol. I got to take in the drugs. I'm not okay on my own. I need this stuff. It's going to make me feel better. But in the end, it doesn't make you feel better. That's the bad thing. It doesn't work. It's not foolproof. That's the problem. This drugs and the alcohol, the food, the shopping, it's never, it's not going it, it, you can't do enough to sustain your, this hole in your soul. You can't do it. It's, there's never going to be enough. There's never going to be enough. There's never going to be enough food, drugs. There's never going to be enough food. There's never going to be enough sex. There's never going to be enough shopping. There's never going to be enough of all these things to fill our soul, to make us not feel scared of what somebody else is going to think about us. What does everybody else think about us? My family think about me. My friends think about me. My neighbors think about me. The stranger down the street thinks about me. What are the, what, all this fear? It's all scared. It's all scared. It's all scared, isn't it? It all goes to the same thing. Our ego, how are we going to feel? How am I going to not be scared? I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. This doesn't look right. That doesn't look right. I'm scared. I'm scared. Fear. Fear. Get something to fill me up so I don't have to feel scared. You know, I went and I saw the movie Elvis. And everybody knows what happens to Elvis. So I'm not giving away the story. 
all I can say to you is this. I went to that movie, loved the music, um, loved the actor that played Elvis, um, loved the job he did acting. Elvis was adorable, adorable. We all know that, right? Every, well, maybe he's not your fancy, but you know, he was very, you know, he was charismatic. He had, um, he was lovely, right? On so many levels. I think, you know, he had a relationship. He had grown up in an area where um, it was predominantly black people, right? It was predominantly black people and he's this white kid. And um, he didn't, he was not racist at all. He loved, loved, loved. That's like how he even, he learned to dance. He watched people in the Baptist church dancing. He watched people in the blues bars dancing. He listened to the music. He had no racism whatsoever in him, right? He just wanted to sing. He just wanted to jive. He felt this power from God, right? He had this power from God to, to move his body and entertain us. And, um, and he was amazing, just amazing. And he loved Dr. Martin Luther King and he loved the Kennedys that were killed. And when Dr. King died, he was so devastated. And you know, this is before drugs were introduced in his life. And when the drugs were introduced in his life, I wanna point out a couple of things. His mother was an alcoholic, his mother died of alcoholism. We, you know, every, a lot of people know that you can read about that. Number two, the Colonel, the gentleman that was in charge of his career that he signed off his career to was a gambling addict. He was a total addict. He couldn't get enough. He couldn't get enough of the games, right? He couldn't win enough. He couldn't get the, the adrenaline that he got that we, a lot of us get from doing drugs and drinking, right? That adrenaline he got from gambling and it boosted him up. Right. And, um, and all of it, you know, the surmise when I walked out of that movie was very sad because um, you think what could have happened to him if he hadn't done drugs, where he would have been if that darkness wasn't, invent wasn't brought into his life. Michael Jackson, Prince, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Robin Williams. The line could go on at, at, at infinitum, meaning I could add more and more names to that list and have it go on and on and on. Those are just the people that I'm thinking about at this moment. And um, I'm thinking about you who's listening to this or watching this. Um, I think about you. I think about me. And I think about, you know, how we are given this gift of life, right? We have this life. And this world is beautiful. This world is beautiful. No matter where you are, there's beauty. You can find beauty wherever you are. And um, this fear we have can be, it just outweighs everything. It's this darkness that takes over everything. And if we continue to feed that fear and go down rabbit holes in our life of this could happen, that could happen, or I did this, I did that. This person isn't going to like me. That person isn't going to like me. I don't like me. That's the basis of everything. We don't like ourselves. When I read that quote from John Lennon, you know, it's all about being, when we get scared, we just want to go in. We don't want to open ourselves up to anybody else. We don't want to be vulnerable to anybody else. At the end of the day, no one likes us right? Nobody likes us because we don't like us. And we hate who we become. And we hate what we did in our addiction. And we hate everything around us. We hate it all. But you know, there's a very thin line between love and hate. Like it's smaller than what's in between my hands if you're watching me on, 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 on my video. It's such a thin line between love and hate. I mean, seriously, this can be love and this can be hate and they're just like pushing at each other. And it's like, which one do you want? Which one do you want? Are you going to do the fear? Are you going to do the faith? Are you going to do the love yourself? Or are you going to do the hate? Are you going to do the love yourself? Or are you going to be in fear? What are you going to do? Which one are you going to feel for? Which one are you going to go to? I've spent majority of my 53 years on this planet being in fear even sober, even sober. I, um, I've found that fear was, um, fear is comfortable for me. I don't know if any of you can relate to that. You know, being in this space of um, what does everybody else think? I was raised, you know, in a house where it was all about what everybody else thought. Everybody, what everybody else thought about you was bigger than what you thought about you. 
So when you walked in church, it was more about how you looked than the message of going, what's going on in church. It was not about the message in church. It was like, how do you have the right outfit? Okay. Are we sitting in the right pew? It wasn't about God. It was about looking okay on the outside. So fear was natural for me. Fear of what other people thought for me was natural. It was a place that I could go to in my heart and know that that's a place where I should worry about. Where I can worry about what you were, what you think about me. I can worry about where my kids are going to go in their future. I can worry about um, what everybody thinks about me. And I did it for a really long time. And it's been... Um, it's been up until just recently, I can tell you that, that I feel like I'm the, I'm the cause of every fear in my life. I'm the cause of it. It's nobody else. I can blame it just as, as I just said. I was telling you the story about how I was raised. It's not about that. It doesn't matter. That was the way I was raised, but now I'm an adult and I can't keep going and blaming that. I can't keep putting my fear on that. because I'll never get better because I'm not going back and changing that. All I'm changing is me. It doesn't matter what those old things that went on in my life and those old things, those old tapes I told myself, it doesn't matter. Those tapes are gone. The people who've made those tapes aren't even on the planet anymore. So having this sense that I've taken the time to acknowledge the fact that I am responsible for all my fears. I am responsible for feeding my fear. I am responsible for not changing. I am responsible for being the one who's gotten to where I've gotten to. It's nobody else. It's me. This fear that I've fed for this whole entire time is about me. I, um, I talked about faith earlier and, um, as you all know, I'm doing this meditation. I'm going to do this um, yoga retreat um, in 10 days. And uh, I'm going to still be able to do my podcast because I can bring my computer. So I'll still do this. But um, And from there, I'll report what it's like. But um, to do this course, I've been doing a lot of homework. And I've been doing a lot of self-reflection. I've been doing a lot of meditating. I've been doing a lot of watching of videos about um, meditation and yoga and um the gifts I've received just from doing this stuff, just from doing that, the stuff that I've been doing, the little things I've been doing, watching this movie um, called The Wake about, um, it's about, um, oh my gosh, the guy who wrote the autobiography of a yogi that was actually, um, and I'm digressing here, it was Bill Gates, not Bill Gates, it was, um, I invited Apple, I can't even think, Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs book, it was the only book on his iPad was the autobiography of a yogi. And not only was it there, but when at his funeral, they handed out copies of the book to everyone and um, the autobiography of the yogi and the movie awake is all about him. And what I've learned from all of this and what I have processed of recently and today, the fear that I have had and that I've put on myself is, um, it's unworthy. It's, um, it's noise. It's, it doesn't matter. I don't need to worry about yesterday. It's already gone. It's seriously gone. I don't have a time machine. I can learn from yesterday. I can look at it and I can acknowledge it. And I can acknowledge where I saw things that I don't like about myself and I can change them. But I can't go back. So the change is what I have to look into. I'm not scared to change. I'm not scared to change. I'm not scared to change behavior that I don't like in myself. I have the courage to look over there and say, mm, I need to change that. And then the fear of tomorrow. I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. I have no idea what's going to happen in an hour. No idea. None of us do. None of us do. So why am I wasting time being scared about what's going to happen in the future? And I have so many people that I work with that say, oh, but I, sh you know, I should be scared because, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with my kids. And if I don't do this, this, and this, it's not going to happen properly. Well, okay. I can say that. 
I can tell you that if you aren't, if you don't buy a lottery ticket, you can't win the lottery. Okay. So you have to be in the game of life, but the outcome of that, you have no, it's, it doesn't matter. I know people that have gotten, you know, perfect straight A's in the Valley Victorian of their class, um, did everything they were supposed to do in life and didn't get into the colleges they wanted to get into. And guess what? Those kids are okay. In fact, they're better than they were, would have been probably if they had gone to those schools that their parents had thought they should have gone to, you know, um, there, everything's going to work out the exact way it's supposed to work out. Everything, everything. Can you let go to that? Can you let go to the fact that you might not know what's going to happen and it's going to be okay? Can you believe that in your heart? Can you get to that place that I'm not going to look in the future and be like, whatever happens, happens and it's going to be okay? Because if you're listening to this or watching this, you already have like taken the first step to go to that place of being like, I'm not scared anymore to change this. I'm not scared anymore to get rid of the alcohol and drugs. I'm not scared anymore enough. Now, by the way, if you're doing alcohol and drugs to the point you need to talk to your doctor before weaning yourself, you need to talk to your doctor. You cannot do this on your own. You need to talk to a doctor. If you're in that, in that place still of using, talk to your doctor about it. You can go on telehealth. You can go to something where maybe you're not scared to talk to somebody, but find out what you need to do to make sure you don't die of um, withdrawal or die from um, tremors. You need to talk to the doctor. But, um, and that's not to scare you. That's just so you know. Um, I have um, a dear, dear friend that um, his spouse has had some um, health issues and she was born with bad heart. And um, this person has relapsed a bunch of times, meaning they pick up a lot because they can't deal with the fear in their life, right? So the, the fear always takes them back to the drug or the drink. And so this person called me and said, I don't know what I'm gonna do. She's going into the surgery. I don't know what's gonna happen. And I said to this person, I said to him, what's the worst thing that can happen? What's the worst fear that you have of this, of this operation that's going to happen on your person that, that is your person, your partner, the person you love more than anything in the whole entire world, your spouse, what is going to happen? What's the worst thing that happens? And he says that she dies. Now, last I checked, we all are going to die. It's just part of life, right? We're born and we die. It happens. And I said, do you know what her wishes are if she does die? If she doesn't make it, what are her wishes? Have you told her that you love her? How does she want to be remembered? Does she want a celebration of life? Does she want a funeral? Does she want a casket? Does she want to... All these things that they had never spoken about, I brought up. And the more I talked to him, he realized, oh my gosh, I know I'm going to be okay if she goes. I know I'm going to be okay. I'm going to miss her like nobody's business. But I'm grateful for the time I had. And I get to do what she wants me to do at the end of her life. And it's not going to be about me. It's not going to be about our kids. It's going to be about her. And it gave him peace. Because he knew. I doing this fear is not going to make me better. It's not going to. It's going to make me angry. It's going to make me hurt. It's going to make me. It's going to. It's just going to be terrible if I just live in this fear because fear comes out sideways on all of us. Fear comes out as anger, hate, remorse, sadness, bitterness. It comes out with all these horrible adjectives, right? Because fear is like, oh God, I don't want to feel this. So fuck you. I'm going to punch you. I don't know what's going to happen. I hate you. It's anger. It's all dark inside of us. All dark, 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 dark. 
But if we go to that light of gratitude, like I know what she wants. I'm, I'm happy for that. I'm blessed. I had an amazing life with her. All these things that you can go to that are light, that are light rather than dark, set you free, set you free. She's in our thoughts and prayers. They're both in my thoughts and prayers. God, please be with them both. But the outcome is not up to me. It's not up to you. It's not up to anybody. We can sit here and want this outcome, but most times it's not going to happen. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Does it really matter? Because then when in doubt, if you like yourself, it doesn't matter. Because you're okay. You're okay. Where's your light come from? Have you found that out yet? Where do you find happiness and joy? Where do you find your love? What's your love from? Where do you find it? Because fear will kill you. Fear will eat you up like nobody's business. So humbly realize that you have no idea what's going to happen in the future, what you did in the past. You can glance at it. You can change it if you want to, what you did that you didn't like. But you're not going back there. And today's the day that you need to figure out what you want to do. Do you want to let go of the fear? And say, I'm going to be willing to do whatever it takes to have the light. I'm going to be doing whatever it takes. I can tell you this. I will do whatever it takes to live in the light. Whatever it takes. Because that's where my joy is in the light. When I get to be in just this moment right now. Just this moment. It's 11.49 a.m. on Wednesday, July 6th. And that time is Eastern Standard. But I have no idea what's going to happen in the future. And yesterday's gone. Today, it seems pretty good. It's really good. It's really good. I'm not scared. Got no fear. No fear right now. That's peace. That's serenity. Ha! Ah, that was deep today, wasn't it? Talked a little bit too long. Maybe I'm over by a couple minutes. But anyway, um, if you like what you heard, please reach out to me at busy, B-I-Z-Z-Y, at busylivingsober.com and that's B-U-S-Y or Elizabeth at elizabethchance.com whichever is easier for you to remember and um, know that you are not alone and that either you're going to get in that feeding of that fear or you're going to get in that feeding of the faith but it's up to you you're going to feed the love or you're going to feed the fear what are you going to do it's up to you this is your life can't blame it on anybody else this is your decision to do for you. And I do this for me. And what are you going to do for you? Again, write to me, please. If you like what you heard, maybe share it with somebody. Subscribe to my channel. I say all these things. I don't even know what it does if I do, but I've heard other podcasters say it, so I'm doing it. <laughs> so um, just realize you're not alone. No matter where you are, you are not alone. There is something bigger than you that you can't touch. You can't feel and you can't see. Find what that is and have love in it and have some faith in it. For me, if that's God, I don't know what it is for you. Maybe write to me and let me know. But until next week, keep getting busy, living sober. Stay sober, everybody. Okay. Enjoy. I hope you like this. And again, have a happy, happy, as one of my dear friends says. She always says, have a happy, happy, have a happy, happy day. Bye, everybody. Take care.